Hello, my name is Simon Williams. I'm an RCO accredited teacher, director for the RCO's East, South and Southwest region, and organist and director of music here at St George's Hanover Square, the parish church of London's Mayfair district. This film presents a short guide to registration, starting with the basics for early stage organists and lovers of organ music using the Richards Fox & Co organ installed here in the existing case in 2012. As we all know, playing the organ involves using your hands and feet. But there's more to it than that. We need to know which sounds to use, how to obtain them and how and when to change them. Another factor is that since all organs are different, your ears are the ultimate guide to what sounds right. So how do we get a sound out of the organ? The organist is confronted with a greater or lesser number of stops, usually arranged either side of the keyboards, or tabs, usually placed above the upper keyboard. Stops are called this because when pressed in, they prevent air under pressure reaching the pipes, and when pulled out, air can reach the pipes thus. Now we need to understand the different sounds available. There are just two basic types of organ pipe, flue and reed. Flue pipes make their sound in the same way that a flute or recorder or penny whistle does, whereas reeds have a brass tongue in the foot of the pipe which operates in the same way as the reed on the clarinet or saxophone. There are different families of flue pipe. First, the principles or the diapasons, the archetypal organ sound, firm and focused. Then there are flutes, which tend to produce a rounder, less assertive, more colourful sound. Listen to three of the eight foot flutes on this organ. New players beware, the stop diapason is a member of the flute family, whereas the open diapason is a member of the principal family. And then we have the strings, a subset of the principal family whose sound is characterised by a slight edginess, as if a bow were being drawn over the string of a violin or a cello. I can demonstrate this with the gamba on the swell. And now, here with the celeste stop, which is tuned slightly sharp and gives a shimmering effect. Beating stops like the celeste are not to be used in larger choruses, but just with one or two or three quiet stops. Reeds can be divided into loud reeds, which are used for bold solos or added to the chorus at climactic moments. Here's the trumpet on the swell. And then there are soft reeds, which can be used for more reflective solos or added to a smaller group of stops to colour the sound. Here's the oboe. Flue stops can be added to reeds to subtly colour the sound. Experiment with, say, an oboe or clarinet adding an eight-foot flute or a four-foot flute, or indeed both. You can download an information sheet showing which stops belong to which family. Each stop controls a rank of pipes, with usually one pipe per note on the keyboard for each stop. 
But stop knobs or the stop labels have different numbers on them, 8, 4 and 2 for instance. What do these signify? Usually this refers to the length of the longest pipe, that for the bottom note of the keyboard. So for the great 8 foot principle, the longest pipe is 8 foot measured from the mouth to the top. Stops of 8 foot pitch play at the same pitch as a piano, so middle C on the great 8 foot principle is the same as middle C on the piano. Four foot stops play an octave higher. Two foot stops an octave higher still. And of course, 16 foot stops play an octave lower. The starting point for manual registrations is usually eight foot pitch, whereas for pedals, it's usually 16 foot. Thus the pedals replicate the double basses in the orchestra adding depth and supporting the higher pitches. So what are these other pitches for? Let's take a well-known hymn tune, Aus der Tiefe. Since hymns are sung by groups of people, we need to start with a bold sound, the eight-foot principle on the main manual, the great, also known as the open diapason. But singers need to be able to hear a pitch other than that at which they hear their own voices. So the basic sound for a hymn would be eight and four foot, and usually the principles. And we can further build the chorus by adding a two foot for brilliance. And here I'll add a 16 foot principle for gravitas. There are usually stops called mixtures on organs. What are they used for? They certainly sound odd on their own. As the term mixture suggests, several pipes sound at once. These are higher pitched pipes of the principal family, adding the upper harmonics to the fundamental pitch. The stop is often marked with a Roman numeral denoting the number of ranks sounding for each note you play. Sometimes the mixture stop lists the actual pitches. So when it says 19, 22, 26, 29, it means that we have notes sounding 22, 19 rather, 22, 26 and 29 notes higher than the note being played. That's the theory, but in actual practice, it's a little bit more complicated. As we've heard, used on their own, mixtures sound bizarre, but added to at least eight foot and four foot principles, they add brilliance and cap what we call the principal or diapason chorus. This way of registering, using single stops of the principal family at each pitch, and in the pedal, a chorus based on the 16-foot reed is what German composers of the Baroque period knew as Organo Plano. Let's hear Aus der Tiefe one more time with a tune in the pedals on an Organo Plano registration. But what of organ music from the 19th century and later? Many hymn tunes in common use date from the 19th century in the first part of the 20th century. So whilst in Aus der Tiefe, a tune from the later part of the 17th century, it's fine, at least on this organ, to use single principal stops at different pitches. The normal style for all hymns 
and for repertoire from the 19th century and first part of the 20th is to create a different sort of chorus by using multiple stops at the same pitch, particularly at eight and four foot. This type of chorus is similar to the effect created by a symphony orchestra where you have multiple violins, violas, cellos and double basses rather than the single instruments of a string quartet. An easy way to achieve this, particularly on smaller organs, is to use the coupler swell to grate, thus making the stops of the swell available on the grate manual. Indeed, when I play hymns, usually the first stops I pull out are swell to grate and then the pedal couplers swell and grate to pedal. For the tune Heron's Gate, I would then draw a mixture of eight and four foot flues, add an eight foot reed, the oboe, or possibly the trumpet, with the swell box partially, if not fully shut. Now let's look at mutation stops and their use. But first of all, what is a mutation? These are stops where the stop knob or stop label shows a fractional length. The most common are two and two thirds, written on this organ as three, and variously known as Nazard, Quint or Twelfth. The one and three fifths, the Thiers, Tet or Seventeenth and the one and one third, the larigo or nineteenth. Perhaps surprisingly, these stops play notes other than the pitch of the key being depressed. Only very rarely indeed are they used on their own, but used with stops of non-fractional length, they create beautiful solo sounds. Perhaps the most common of these is the cornet, the English term, or the corne, French. A stop beloved of composers from France and England from the uh, second half of the 17th century and the first half of the 18th century. This organ has a stop called cornet and it's a five ranks so when you pull it out we hear flute stops of eight foot, four foot, two two thirds, two foot and one and three fifths pitches simultaneously creating a bold and strikingly colourful sound. I can create a similar sound on the swell by drawing individual stops of those lengths. Eight, four, two, two and two thirds, one and three fifths. But here I have the flexibility to miss out some of the higher pitches to create new solo colours. Here is eight, four and two and two thirds. And now, here is just eight and two and two thirds. On the choir division of this organ, there is a stop called sesquialtera which has two ranks of pipes at two and two thirds and one and three fifths pitches. It can be used with eight foot and indeed eight four and two foot pitches for solos or used in the chorus like a mixture producing a strikingly jangly and spicy sound. Newcomers to the organ often ask what the rows of buttons are placed between the manuals and above the pedals. These are called pistons and when pushed operate preset combinations of stops.
The pistons placed centrally between the manuals are divisional pistons only working the stop specific to the manual above the row of the particular pistons. So these pistons here operate the swell. Pistons placed above the top manual, or as here, off to the left, are general pistons and operate stops, preset combinations of stops across the entire organ. It's often possible to adjust the stops which are set for each piston with the use of a setter button, which is usually found under the lowest note of the bottom keyboard. And many organs nowadays have a stepper or sequencer which allows the settings on the general pistons to be toggled through in sequence. The stepper piston is usually marked with a plus to go forward or a minus to go backwards through the settings. Multiple levels of memory further add to the myriad settings which can be stored in the organ. For further information on this topic, go to our A to Z series of films about the organ and P for Pistons, which is available also on our IRCO channel. So far I have talked largely about what might be termed terrace dynamics, but organists also need to know how to achieve seamless crescendos and diminuendos. The swell pedal is the key to achieving this effect. The pipes of the swell division, and on this organ the choir too, are placed inside a box on the front of which are vertical shutters. When the swell pedal is pressed with the heel, the shutters close, and when pressed with the toe, they open, thus creating a gradual diminuendo or crescendo. This is a useful effect in itself and one frequently called for by composers from the mid-19th century onwards to create a piano-like crescendo and diminuendo. But using the swell pedal can, judiciously, can also mask the addition or subtraction of stops in a large-scale build-up or diminuendo. In the following example, I will make a crescendo from mezzo piano to forte and then diminuendo right down to pianissimo. As I add stops, I quickly shut the swell pedal, which then allows me to crescendo with it through the next phrase, and then repeat the process as I add more stops, quickly shutting the pedal, opening it again. And then for the diminuendo, I do the reverse. As I remove stops, I open the swell box, and then I can diminuendo by shutting it through the next phrase. With practice, you can go from the quietest stop on the organ to the full organ sound and back again using the swell pedal to mask the addition and subtraction of stops. I hope you've enjoyed this whistle-stop guide to the art of registration. Whilst it's important to understand the sounds that individual composers might have expected, we should also remember that for a particular piece, on a particular organ, on a particular occasion, your ears must be the guide to what sounds right. Have fun experimenting. <laughs> <laughs>